Welcome back into the shop everybody on a cold January day here on the Rancho and it is time to put aside our Harman Kardon HK300C and get back on the Marantz QX949 which is the quadraphonic unit really kind of a top of the line product by Marantz to address the rise of quadraphonic or four channel stereo sound in the 1970s well it never caught quite caught on but it uh, they did make a beautiful receiver packed with all sorts of bells and whistles and we took a look at it initially and there's not a lot of things that we need to do to it thanks good thank goodness we need to clean it up a little bit bought some compressed air I got some contact cleaner and we're gonna go ahead and clean up some of the contacts and do another uh, do a few other things here on the project so let's hit the bench as I noted in part one one of the big features of this unit is just the sheer weight of this is massive of course a lot of that comes from the uh, gigantic power transformer down here which alone weighs about 30 pounds we've got four enormous filter capacitors to smooth out the flow of uh, DC power to the uh, unit it has a ton of inputs and outputs on the back of it and it is really a remarkable unit like I said at the beginning though there's nothing wrong with it that um, should inhibit the playing of this unit but we always want to try to give a visual inspection inside of it to make sure that we see no apparent breaks in any of the wiring or we don't see any uh what they call electrolytic capacitors here that may be bad that may have blown tops from going chemically uh bad and in doing that i didn't really see any uh any problems at note i do use a magnifying glass glass here to take a micro look at all of the components and all the wiring all the fuses are intact here it's a nice fuse protected unit we do have the bottom uh, bottom plate off and as usual a caution if you are doing electronics make sure you know what you are doing because they can be deadly even the uh, transistorized units like this well I've moved the I've removed a lot of the I've removed the screws that hold the control board I've made sure that there's no power to the unit at all it's very easy to short out parts with a lot of metal here and we're going to go ahead and clean inside of these um, um, put some lubrication down in these potentiometers potentiometers which adjust things like volume and base and balance because they're mechanical electrical interfaces and they're usually the parts that go bad on these uh, units wherever you have a mechanical interface with electrical well you can often have a lot of problems uh, there especially with contacts that get corroded so I use a good rated uh, contact cleaner here do not use something like this it will destroy the plastic that uh, uh, components of these potentiometers you need to make sure that you use a good rated product here so this is basic maintenance of a unit it's something that you would go in and pay a uh, shop if there were still some around which there really aren't a shop to do this work so what we're going to try to do there's some openings in the back of these potentiometers and we're going to work our uh, spray nozzle in there and try to work uh, some of this contact cleaner in there to clean up some of those contacts in addition if you look down here you will see the other control the um, um, selector switch between phono and auxiliary FM, FM stereo, and AM, and quadraphonic. We want to spray that down well too, as long as as well as some of the other uh, control parts up here. Uh, on the, in other words, anything that has a button that moves here, we want to try to lubricate and clean that. I dropped off there, so I'm trying to put down in one direction. You don't need a lot in there. 
give it a good spray so the air carries it around inside. Try to get inside all of these uh, units. And I'm not going to really be able to um, flip it around, but I'm going to try to do a spray up in the uh, counter direction too. And this, this won't harm the board at all. I'm trying to keep it very controlled here by getting it up in the right places. And we're going to let that set for a couple minutes. Then we're going to go back and start uh, turning these to let them work in real good. So, see you in a couple minutes. Okay, we've allowed that to soak in a couple minutes. So we'll just work these back and forth. And what that does is that uh, contact cleaner is actually cleaning and lubricating those metal contact points there. So that should be pretty good. We can also remove these little buttons on the spring switches here. And we can inject some of this down into them. Remember, a clean contact is a happy contact, okay? So we're going to let that dry a bit there. Going to put these back on place in place so that they uh, don't get lost. Slide them right back on. They have a definite uh, way that they go on. Oh, I'm going to have to fiddle with that. All set in position. Now we need to uh, reinstall this control board. But before we do that, we're going to let these work in a little bit too. Up here, the upper, uh, the upper uh, switches and knobs that we lubricated internally and also down here okay so let's work them in really well as a side note when you go to uh, disassemble some of these units and remove parts it's very easy to forget where well did this go on here did it go on here if you take pictures beforehand then you won't have a problem and i'm going to go ahead and refer back and see where this plastic insulator goes because it's going to be very important to get everything into the right place before we nest it back in there. Okay, very, very important. Just to show you what I mean, for the life of me, I wouldn't remember where that plastic insulator goes, but because I took a picture of it uh, several days ago and then moved on to other projects, well, I could have very, very easily forgotten that it goes in this, uh, this position right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that and we should be good to go to put this um, control panel, control uh, potentiometers back in place over here. Okay. Ooh, take plenty of pictures. And we're going to try to carefully pop this unit in without uh, popping any wires off. And put it back in position so it comes properly out the front we're going to make sure that insulating tab is set in position there too so yeah that looks pretty pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and start uh, uh, securing that to the uh, chassis here it is nice and secured in position we got our plastic uh, offset uh, um, i don't want to call it a bushing but spacer there so it looks pretty good to go in that regard. So I'm now going to sit the unit down this way on the bottom. I don't see anything underneath. I've got to make sure your area is clean so that there's no screws or anything down here that could get in the way of uh, touching things on the bottom. And going to continue working in those knobs to let that uh, contact cleaner working thoroughly here so let's do that all right that will allow that contact solution that's on the inside to shift its position and lubricate everything else in here so i'm going to go ahead and do that just a bit of an adjustment this is not the moranch unit i'm juggling so many it's uh, so many projects at one time here in the shop 
Harman Kardon, the Pioneer. This is a Pioneer QX949, which was a top of the line Pioneer product. It is not the Marantz Quad Rail, of which I have one of them too that we'll be doing in a future upload. So you know, let me just correct that right off the bat. I'm still lubricating here and doing a uh, inspection, making sure I don't have any loose wires or bad solder connections. Let me tell you, when they build top of the line stuff, especially Pioneer, the Marantz's, the Kenwoods, they do it right. The quality, especially in the uh, 1970s and into the 80s, was fantastic. So, okay, let me get back to work here. Now, typically, if you were to, if you could even find one today, a place that services vintage AM, FM receivers, quadraphonic units, there are many adjustments that you can make to fine tune the performance, uh, such as adjusting DC offset to make sure that you're getting equalization of output across both channels. But a word of caution, the deeper you go, in starting to connect things to boards, the greater the chance, I mean alligator clips, wires, voltmeters, the greater the chance that you're going to short something out in there and cause a catastrophe. I've seen it so many times. I've gotten projects in here. Well, I tried to put new electrolytic caps into my unit and nothing now. Or I tried to adjust the DC offset and I dropped my voltmeter probe onto the board and I don't know why it doesn't work. Well, I don't know why it doesn't work either. I'm a minimalist when it comes to projects. If it ain't broke, do not fix it. You know, when this unit was running for an hour or two, feeling around a little bit, making sure no components are getting super hot and everything feels balanced uh, by the way of feel. And also, look, I don't mess with it at that point. Uh, now's the point we got things all lubricated that I'm going to go ahead and clean up some of the cosmetics here the front the case it's very clean on the um, on the um, uh, inside face of it the tuning face and we'll have a couple cautions for that too in case you're one of those people that thinks just grab a rag and start rubbing away well that could be a huge mistake I have the uh, front panel I'm sitting here and if you see all this lettering I've actually seen people take um, uh, steel wool and start to try to clean the front off of these uh, units just to get them to look uh, shinier and prettier. The problem is these units are silk screened on these letters here and if you rub too aggressively you can rub the uh, printing right off of it. I've seen it a lot of times. You can take something gentle like Windex which we'll do and we'll clean this uh, panel here. You can see it's pretty scuffed up and then we'll go ahead and reinstall. As far as how things are on here, just a little wipe along the uh, the black part of the back facing should clean that up real good. You have to be careful. You don't bust your tuning indicator. And, you know, you have to be very, very delicate. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. And then we'll start to... Uh, uh, address this uh, faceplate, which of course people buy. If you're going to buy a vintage unit, you've got to buy the cosmetic look of it. That is super critical. People are going to buy, and uh, especially uh, big time collectors, want things that are in virtually perfect condition. So you want to be very, very careful. Okay? Here we go. I'm working the uh, faceplate back on, getting the securing nuts in place here. I did use some Windex with a, a very soft cotton cloth to get things uh, to a mirror type finish without destroying the silk screening on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the knobs back on and we'll fire up and see how she looks and how she sounds. I think that's looking real good. I also took the time to clean up all of the uh, knobs using the Windex. I've all got them all back in the uh, proper position. They're all functioning properly. It's now time to put the uh, base plate on you know, for good protection against shorts and everything else. So go ahead and do that now. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, before we do that, wrap it up and do a little final thing here. 
I want to thank you guys for being along. I'm going to put the I'm going to put some uh, conditioning on the top of the um, unit. The uh, wood there should keep it in good shape for a lot of years. So let's let's place the uh, top back on for maximum protection, and let's go ahead and try to wrap up this video. Let's go ahead. Be very careful. Don't ever pour your. This is a natural. And just look at the way that uh, brings that wood up beautifully, huh? And that's going to give it a lot of preservation. Nice natural. It's a Danish oil there, which is great to use. Don't forget your sides, too. You don't need a lot of it. It penetrates in real well. And it's a very, very good wood preservative. Okay. Just a word to the wise, sometimes less is more. And isn't that wood just stunning there? And don't forget, if you're thinking about buying a piece of vintage electronic gear, which I hope you do, remember, no matter how well it works or whatever, the way it looks is always going to be the big seller amongst most collectors, as it is with most things, coins, stamps, the better the condition, the better the originality, the better the price. It don't settle for scratches and scuffs and all that. Demand pristine condition and beauty when you're looking at uh, purchasing vintage audio electronics. Nice sheen on that. Fucking beautiful. I want to thank you for being with me. That is going to conclude my part of running my mouth for this video. We'll end on a little bit of uh, music and uh, see how she sounds. Your thumbs up are appreciated. Remember, not everything is a technical mountain decline and, and less is more a lot of the time. The less you fiddle and fool with things, the less likely that you are to get into trouble. And, uh, well, you don't want to go ahead and procure a $500, $600 unit, $400, $200, whatever. And then go ahead and destroy it, trying to make it better. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Thanks again, everybody, and thumbs up are very appreciated. The beautiful Pioneer Quadraphonic QX949, the beast from the east. Thank you, everybody.